I am so proud to introduce our distinguished speaker this afternoon, Yamish Alcindor. Thank you, Jason, so much for that introduction. Um, it, it, I was rushing here, running to, to this graduation, and I thought, why am I rushing? Why am I so passionate about NYU? And it's because I love this place so much because I would not be where I am without NYU, without all of the people that I've met. Amanda, thanks for blessing us with those words. You made me cry. So I'm gonna try to now hold it together because I was like, I didn't come here to cry. I have to go to work <laughs> after this. Um, but it's, it's so amazing to hear you talk about your experience. Um, and it makes me feel like the, 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 all of the lessons that you've learned have equipped you to go forward in, in all these different ways that you're gonna have to um, rise to the occasion and, and go through other challenges. So first off, of course, congratulations to the class of 2020. You did it, it was not easy. It was, it, there were all sorts of hurdles, including of course a global pandemic, but personal hurdles I've been through as a, as a news and documentary alumni, I've been through the rigorous um, program at NYU Journalism and I understand just how much it takes to get through that. People sometimes make it seem like graduate school is this thing that you can just do whenever. And I got to graduate school and realized how hard it was. So it is no small feat that you were able to graduate amid a pandemic in these times. Um, Amanda, when you spoke about resilience and strength, it's all of those those characteristics that make this class a, spe a special class. Even though I love to think that my class is the best class, um, I have to say that this class rising to the occasion, obviously you guys are the MVP right now of <laughs> NYU journalism graduates. Um, this has been a terrible, tragic and historic year and earning your degree at NYU um, is such an accomplishment. To the graduates, thank you for allowing me to share this time with you as you receive your degrees and begin this new phase of your life. You adapted, you grew, you rose to the occasion. To the faculty and staff at NYU, especially to Jason, to Marsha, to Joe, thank you so much for trusting me with talking to these graduates, with giving me this opportunity to speak before you today to this especially hard working group of graduates. Thank you, of course, to all the people who supported the graduates um, that are getting their degrees today, to the moms, to the dads, to the grandparents, the cousins, to the friends. I know for me, it took a whole village of people to help me graduate from NYU. So I, this, this day is about you, of course, the graduates, but it's also about the big villages that helped you along the way um, to get here. It's a great honor to deliver this keynote address. And I would have loved to be in New York, of course, cheering you on, um, visiting the place that I love so much. But of course we know that this has to be a virtual event. But just know that even though we're gathering virtually with, with now I'm seeing some 200 people, know that virtually doesn't mean that your accomplishment should be any less celebrated. You should be excited. You should be maybe grabbing some wine or asking Jason to send you some, 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 some wine after this because um, you have done it. Rest assured that today as you receive your degrees, you are already your ancestors' wildest dreams. You are already the wildest dreams of your professors and your, and your support systems. And let me of course start by stating the obvious. 2020 has been awful, globally, nationally, personally, full stop. That said, many around the country are celebrating the historic win of President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. Um, the first woman, first black woman, first Asian American, first member of the v Divine Nine to be elected as vice president. Um, but also there are millions of Americans mourning the loss of President Trump losing the election, believing without evidence his false claims of winning the election and of, and of making the claim that the election was stolen from him. Millions of people are also suffering from the impact of a global pandemic that has killed hundreds of thousands of Americans and infected millions around the world. We all, of course, also had to witness the death of George Floyd on May 25th when a white police officer kneeled on his neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds. The nation is going through a racial reckoning, yet despite all that we've endured in 2020, this year has also led to some of the most consequential and important conversations in a generation. What does it mean to truly be a journalist in this time period? What does it mean to be an American, to be a civil rights person, a civil rights leader in this moment? What does it mean for the country to wanna to live up to its promises of treating every man and woman equally, 
Will a pandemic that is tearing apart families pull Americans closer together or divide them? And what does it mean that so many are looking at this election and at this time period as life and death um, and through the lens of fear? And how do folks, and especially myself as a Haitian American Black woman, stay lifted and focus on doing the work? And how do you get graduates go forth in this time period and survive and thrive? For me, it's about finding your purpose and being resolved to do your life's mission. So it really comes down to three things. I, I, I had to, of course, study for this and three things is usually what people wanna give you. So the first is find your purpose and your passion, then stay the course, no matter the setbacks, the lesson that I'm sure you graduates have learned and do the right thing even when no one is looking. So pursue your life's passion and purpose. On the first, as a White House correspondent interested in civil rights journalism, my life's passion is holding people accountable and giving voice to so many people who may never walk into the White House. That's why I don't shy away from posing tough questions or challenging President Trump or other leaders to make sure that they're being held accountable. So the question is, what is inspiring you? What do you cry about that others don't cry about? What could you do and focus on every single day for the rest of your life and be happy? Get hungry for that thing and go, over, go after that thing with fervor. Make a career out of doing that thing that is driving you. And you are quite already a class of problem solvers and survivors. So focus on the areas that move you and give yourself time also to figure out that passion. Stay the course no matter the setbacks. Staying the course means give yourself time to develop. Of course, you're graduating, you're going on to amazing things. But before I was a full-time journalist earning a degree that paid my bills and earning a, and, and having a job that paid my bills, I worked at McDonald's. I was a telemarketer. I worked at a leather store in Miami. I was a helper at class reunions in South Florida. Maybe you're graduating without a job or without the job that you thought you would get. Maybe you're graduating with a lot of student loans and are anxious about what comes next. I am here to tell you, give yourself time to develop and focus on putting one foot in front of the other. Even if you're graduating also into a job that you believe may be your dream job, brace for it. When I started my career in journalism, the setbacks came quickly and they will come for you too. Um, many people have seen the president call me nasty or my question racist or say that I'm threatening. I've put forward and so can you because I have news for you. Each of you will experience moments where people will challenge the very premise of your existence and your pursuits. Maybe an editor will tell you, like one told me, that you're not confident enough to be in the newsroom. Maybe when someone will tell you, like someone told me, that you're not pretty enough to be on TV. Maybe someone will criticize your career choices or who you choose to love or where you choose to live. But I say press forward, stay the course, drown out the noise, go forward. And lastly, do the right thing when no one is looking. This advice comes down to what the late Congressman John Lewis called good trouble. John Lewis planned his last words to this nation to be published in the New York Times on the day of his funeral. And he wrote in part, when you see something that is not right, you must say something. You must do something. Democracy is not a state. It is an act and each generation must do its part to build what we have called the beloved community, a nation and world society at peace with itself. Ordinary people with extraordinary vision can redeem the soul of America by getting into what I call good trouble, necessary trouble. Journalism is my good trouble and I suspect that journalism is also your good trouble if you're graduating from this amazing institution. I implore you to find your good trouble. You might, own, you might be the only black person in a boardroom at a big television news network or the only person of color in a newsroom meeting or the only woman at a big at a big documentary film festival, speak up and don't be afraid to let your experiences allow you to make the places that you're blessed to be in better. Do what is right. And lean, of course, lastly, on your NYU network. I can't tell you how many times I emailed Jason or Marsha or Joe, or Joe with all sorts of questions about my careers or just to vent to talk about what's going on. The people that I met at NYU changed my life and they are people that I count on as friends. They're my personal board of directors um, and they are my, they're my classmates. I was just emailing with one of my classmates, Alice, who is a documentary filmmaker at CNN um, just, la just last night. 
these are the people that are going to help you through your life. Yes, you can go and network to get jobs. But when I'm telling you the way that you keep those jobs, the way that you keep yourself sane is by leaning on your NYU community, leaning on the people, your, your fellow classmates, telling them about the things that, that you're struggling with, being vulnerable with the NYU community. Um, and lastly, I think there's something I want to say about this advice that is a little unconventional. I talked to someone when I was ge gearing up to cover the trial of George Zimmerman. I mean, I was very, very nervous. And I said, what's the best thing I should do to try to make sure I cover this trial well? And the person told me, don't be a jerk. And I tell you that because it is simple, but it is concise advice. Be good to people be good to the people around you, be good to the people that you're interacting with, be someone that if people remember you, they just remember you as a decent human being that will get you into doors in journalism that will help you and will continue to, to help you strive and, and deal with all sorts of challenges. So don't be a jerk, lean on NYU and find your purpose. I'm so excited to join you today. I, would, I ran here because I love NYU so much and I hope that you will continue to love NYU as you become an alumni. Thank you.